Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasovic and in this video I will show you how to use the factory pattern to improve your object creation without specifying the concrete objects in your business logic. It is a very useful pattern and I use it all the time in my projects. For example, after this video, you can watch my video where I explain how to use this pattern with dependencyinjection.net and see how useful this pattern is. The link will be in the description below. At the end of the video, I will show you how to use factory method refactoring technique to make the code even better with this pattern. If you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports the channel as well. So let's move on with the project. The factory pattern is a creational design pattern that provides an interface for creating objects without specifying their concrete classes. It defines a method that we can use to create an object instead of using its constructor. The important thing is that the subclasses can override this method and create objects of different types. In this diagram, you can find an addition to the usual diagrams you can see for this pattern, factory execution. And you will see how I use that one to make the code more modular and readable. Now, I already have a project created with three folders, so it is easier for you to track where the different classes belong. At this point, I would like to let you know about our products. Currently, we have the Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book and the Blazor WebAssembly course you can use to create client C-sharp apps without using JavaScript. Of course, we are working on new ones, so always check these links in the description below. Now, to implement a factory pattern, I will create a simple air conditioner application. My app will receive input from a user and based on that input will trigger a required action. That said, let's start with an interface inside the product folder. And let's name it iAirConditioner. Here, I will create a single void method member named Operate. This will be the main method for each air conditioner product class to execute its logic. Now, let's create those individual product classes. The first one will be Cooling Manager. This one will inherit from the main interface. And let's implement the operate method right away. Now, I will create a private read only double field named temperature and use a constructor to initialize this field. Lastly, inside the operate method, I will print a simple message to the console window. In the same way, Let's create a new product class and name it Warming Manager. Here, I will have almost the same implementation as in the previous one, with the inheritance from the same interface and implementation of the same method. Of course, you can imagine how different the logic can be in these classes in real life examples. Now, I need the private read only double field named temperature. And again, let's use a constructor to initialize it. Lastly, inside the operate method, I will simply print the message. With the concrete products prepared, I can focus my attention on factory classes. So, inside the factory folder, let's create a new class and name it Air Conditioner Factory. It will be an abstract class. And I will have a single abstract method that returns the I air conditioner type, so the main product interface. And let name it create with a single double parameter named temperature. This signature tells us that this method will create an instance of any of the concrete product classes. Now, let's move on to the concrete factories. First, let's create a new class named Cooling Factory. I will inherit from the base factory class and then I can override the create method where I will simply return a newly created instance of the Cooling Manager class with the provided argument. With this implementation, you can already assume what the new factory class will look like. So let's just name it Warming Factory. Again, I will inherit from the base class 
and override the create method. Just this time, I will return a new warming manager instance with the required argument. With this, we are done with the factory classes and let's finish the implementation with the execution class. Just before I do that, inside the execute factory folder, I will create a new enumeration first. Let's make the class enum and add two items here, cooling and warming. Now I can create a new class and name it air conditioner. I will use this class to execute my factories. So first I will create a private read only dictionary of air conditioner actions and air conditioner factory types and name it factories. Then I will simply create an empty constructor here. Now, there are two ways I can populate this dictionary with the individual factories. The first one is the manual way. Inside the constructor, I will instantiate the dictionary. And then, for the first item, I will provide the cooling action for the enumeration and the instance of the cooling factory class. For the second item, I will do the same. Just this time, use the warming actions from the enumeration and then create the instance of the warming factory class. That's all it takes. It is easy to add new factories if we need to, but again, we have to add a new factory for each action. On the other hand, I will show you an automatic way of adding factories, but it's a bit more complicated. So, let's hide the first implementation and now create an instance of my dictionary. Now, I will loop through each action from my enumeration using a for each loop. And to do that, I will use the enum.getValues method where I have to provide the type of the enumeration. Now, I need to explain something first. I need to populate my dictionary with the action and the individual factory class instance. The full name of those classes consists of its namespace, the dot, and the name of the class. So, this is what I am going to retrieve now. I need the type first, and for that, I will use the type class and the getType method. As the argument, I will first extract the full name using the type of air conditioner factory type and calling the namespace property. Because each factory class inherits from the base one and exists in the same folder, I use the base class type here for the namespace. Then, let's move this to another line for better readability. And now, I will add dot and then the name of the class, which again consists of the name of the action and the factory word. So, after the dot, I will call the enum.getName method and provide the type of the enumeration I use, air conditioner actions, and the action parameter. Lastly, I need the factory word here. This will create the full name of the type I need to create. After this is done, I can create a factory, and to do that, I will cast the created instance to the air conditioner factory type and call the activator dot create instance method to create the instance of the provided type. Finally, let's populate my dictionary with both the action and the factory. With this done, I need a way to execute the creation of my factory instances. And for that, I will create a new public method that returns I air conditioner type and name it execute creation. Of course, I need two parameters, the action from the enumeration and the temperature parameter. All I want to do here is call the dictionary with a specific key and call the create method passing the temperature as an argument. Great. The last thing is to test this. Inside the program class, let's create a new factory variable, instantiate the air conditioner class, 
and then call the execute creation method where I will pass the action I want to execute with the temperature of the room I want to have. Of course, I need to call the operate method as well. Okay, let's run the app and you can see the result here. Now, let's see how we can improve this code a bit more. I can use the factory method to replace a constructor while creating an object. If the constructor consists of lots of code, we should replace it with the factory method. Furthermore, we can have multiple factory methods with meaningful names and parameter names as well, which replace a single constructor. This improves code readability a lot and it helps with the chaining syntax. Let's see how to do that. First, I will change the accessor of my constructor to private. Then, I will create a new public static factory method. You see, it returns the type of this class. And let's name it initialize factories. All I want to do here is to create a new instance of this class. That's all it takes. Now I can return to the program class and modify the code. I will remove this one here and then use the class first, then the factor method to retrieve the class instance. Next, I will call the execute creation method with the required arguments for the action and the temperature. And finally, chain the call to the operate method. Now, if I run this, the result is still the same, but this client code looks a lot better. Great! You saw how with factory pattern we can replace direct object construction calls with calls to special factory method. The objects are still created, of course, but it's being called from within the factory method. With this, it's easier to extend the product construction code independently from the rest of the code. That said, Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.